Morning, uh, Carl Meredith. I'm going to give you a brief talk through this uh, first thing that I've made about the rear monitor assemblies which are used in both the RR31 and the RR11 uh, and 12, which is the Phantom and the Cullinan. Uh, I'll start by giving a brief talk through the current process, including the current layout of the area. Uh, we'll discuss any of the man machine interfaces and interactions that happen, uh, considerations and factors that have gone into the current layout. And then later on, we'll come on to a future state and we'll, we'll discuss any of the ergonomic considerations that have been taken in, as well as the health and safety and the stresses on the man and the body and the workers and that type of thing. So, if we start with the, the current layout, um, the new moni the, the monitor assembly process is fairly new. It's been within the leather shop for around 18 months to two years, and it was originally trying to be outsourced to the supplier, but due to the value of the product, the screens themselves are, are worth about 750 extra pounds internally as a scrap value, and the supplier didn't want to take on that liability when it comes to assembly because there's glue and pressure and that type of thing. For a short while, the process was was, was brought in house uh, to the leather shop, and given the space constraints within the layout, we had to make do with what we had rather than having something that was really thought through, uh, which is where we can on to the future current state or the future state uh, later on. So, what we've got is we've got an assembly location which is outside of the, the zone which actually <coughs> consumes the product, uh, and that's identified here by the yellow circle. So that's the assembly location there. All the parts are stored in the Kanban location here, which is fulfilled by the physical logistics team. And again, because there is quite a bit of carryover between the 11 and 12 side brackets and the back panels, as well as the screens being different, these locations are set up fairly far away. And they're, they're designed with the ergonomic considerations for the physical logistics team rather than the assembly team. But because we're not looking at the physical logistics team, I won't, I won't kind of labor on them too much. But what you've got is at one side, on the bottom shelf, for instance, you may have the left hand and the right hand um, brackets. Down here on the top shelf, because they're light, you'll have the back brackets, you'll have the monitors for the 11 and 12, which is a Phantom, stored in one location, and then the RR31, which is a Cullinan, <coughs> stored in a different location. And the associate is expected to know where these are and travel the distance from the assembly location to the picking location to get these parts and bring them back. There is a degree of man-machine interaction at this point because he takes a digital scanning device with him so he can confirm that the parts that he's picking are suitable to that vehicle. Otherwise, you end up with a touchscreen monitor that should be in a 31 into a Phantom, which is, which is wrong. Um, so once he travels from the assembly location to the Kanban location, he then walks back and, and finishes the assembly, which we'll come on to in, in a little while. Once the product is then finished, which is what you see up here, he then takes that over to a storage location, which again is a, is a walkable distance uh, from, where, from where he's actually assembled them. The associate then on station one within the seat build section is then tasked with having to walk from where he's doing his work across a walkway, which is used for logistics, into the collection location to bring the parts back. Now, he doesn't consume the part, he just collects the part. He places it on top of the AGVs, the um, automatic guided vehicles, and it travels freely on top of the device over these next three stations where work is completed. <coughs> At that point, it reaches station five, which is here, and that's where the part is eventually consumed and fitted onto the vehicle. So that's that's just a brief where what the layout currently looks like and the process around that. Now, the assembly location is a relatively small desk which we can see in here, it's maybe about a metre, a metre and a half in, in, in length, and it's fitted into another zone in terms of in terms of footprint, in terms of area. As a result of that, it ends up looking very similar to what you see there, and that picture was actually taken yesterday of the working area, um, and you've got a headrest mould, you've got a completed monitor next to a metal tool uh, with a plastic plexus gun next to a metal jig, and you know, you've got an expensive piece of, piece of equipment. Um, so sort of having to buy things that could do a lot of damage and cause a lot of problems. Now one of the main factors with these monitors is that they are ESD sensitive, so electrical static discharge, um, or EPA, which is electric, um, electrostatic protected area, is what should be, should be going in there, but ESD is what we're the first Um so that, that's where we are with that. So if we go back to the man versus machine, we've got the electronic barcode scanner, which allows the associate to confirm that the parts he's picking from an otherwise cluttered Kanban area are correct. 
and you've got digitally controlled tool talking. Now you can't see it here, um, but just, just off picture here, um, the talk settings within the, the fixing of these are really quite sensitive. You're talking 1.2 to 2.4 newton meters for various fixings. So there's a digital control tool in there which ensures that these bolts are done correctly. And if there weren't to be, and there was to be an accident, the monitor could split, could shatter, could not function correctly and cause issues for the, for the owner so and, and the end customer. So how does the operator know that they've actually ident scanned or identified the part that they're working with correctly? So when they when they work from their, or walk from their assembly area over to the CAN van, they'll take a scan gun with them, yeah. and there'll be a barcode within either the product itself, if it's, if it's large enough to accommodate one, or it'll be on the shelf underneath. <coughs> and then the logistics team will have correctly confirmed when they delivered that, that this box goes to this location, so that will be correct and confirmed. And then the associate will go and scan that location and then pick from just above it. So does the scanner beep when it's scanned? Yeah, there's, no, there's an audible sound and, and a green light will appear on, on the screen to oh. say this is the correct one and likewise red if it was to be incorrect. And the tool that you just mentioned there, that was doing the measuring of to the exact nanometers? Yeah, so there, there's various fixings that go on the end. And if you select, say, a, um, a, a tool with a red band around it, as that clicks into the gun, the gun recognises what this fixing is and says, right, you've now put this one on, which means it's 1.2 newton meters. The torque will automatically be changed digitally so that when they do that fixing up, it will max out at 1.2 newton meters. So in this, just I'm just getting to the yeah. point that, that in this particular situation you're describing, there's, there's no long-term activity looking at display screens or anything like that. This is no, not not for this. It's 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 a five component part. Yeah. Um. So the, that level of um, display screens and that type of thing wouldn't be necessary in this area. So where exposure to screens for a long time might be a thing that you would take into consideration. Are there some longer term? effects on the associate that you might be considering as they're doing these activities? Yeah, so we, within the area here, there's, there's a few things, and I kind of mentioned them here. So uh, a few examples of musculoskeletal disorders um, include things like carpal tunnel, uh, repetitive strain injuries, uh, rotator cuff injuries, and muscle strains, especially in the lower back, in the survey that's been conducted says that MSDs, musculoskeletal disorders, accommodate 33% of all workplace injuries. Um, what this area is, is very poor at and what this process is very poor at in its current state is the walking distance and the time in motion between the assembly area to the Kanban area to the finished parts yep. then for the associate on station one to have to walk across a busy area um, to then go and collect the parts to bring them back that is it's, 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 it's a poor it's a poor layout but due to the restraints and, and the physicality of the area that was this is how it currently sits because of that um, the area is very tight and the lighting is very poor. Um, so they've got uh, lighting very similar to this, just general overhead lighting within the area. It's not specific lighting. And some of these fixings, you're talking just a few millimetres big or tall and that type of thing. So um, lighting is definitely something that could be improved, which we come on to in, into the future state as well. Yeah. You've got the safety aspect of the ESD. So the, mo the monitors, very expensive and, and um, a delicate piece of equipment which could be affected quite negatively by electrostatic discharge, the area isn't very well protected all that. They go some way in terms of an ESD coating um, onto the bench, but then you've got an anti-fatigue matting which stands between the ESD floor and your associate, which then negates the properties of the ESD floor. You've then got free-flowing uh, metal tooling which is unearthed, so you, you've got, it goes some way towards satisfying the ESD and protecting the associate as well as the product, but then it fails on a few elements as well. Um, so just say, just uh, while we've, we've jumped onto the ergonomic considerations, we have got the anti-fatigue matting, but we have the, the non-specific lighting as well. Uh, in terms of the layout considerations, then it is a fairly large and open area around that associate. And whilst that's a positive, meaning that he's got room to move and that nothing's really gonna hit him, he is stood for a very long time, um, and the anti-fatigue matting only goes so far. The desk isn't adjustable, which means if you have a particularly tall associate, he's stooped down and, and that's, that's causing problems and strain and stress on his back. Likewise, if you have a fairly small associate, they're, they're suffering from the same thing as well. Um, you have got complete product storage in, in the Kanban, but again, it's a walking distance, which is a waste of time. It's a non value added activity. The, there has been um, some consideration for the Kanban storage, but again, as you can see from the, from the desk here, you haven't got anywhere to store the, the stuff that you're actually using. 
uh, and the finished product movement is excessive from once he's actually finished or that associate has actually finished it to where the point fit is. It's, it's a long, you know, it's, you've, got, you've got four or five tacks within that there and this process is repeated of this option is fitted to around 75% of vehicles which means the associate is doing this activity between 20 and 30 times a day across each shift. So 60 times a day this, this process could be repeated with all that waste and, and risk going on. So did, did things change in this layout to any extent or are they going to possibly change with the company's aim of producing more cars? Yeah, they, 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 things have to change. Um, this was, because this is a relatively new process that's been introduced, it was a more of an, an immediate reaction to business requirements. We needed these monitors and therefore we needed to get the, the, the area set up in such a way that we could manufacture them. It hasn't yet been streamlined but as volumes increased, there's a whole layout change going on within the leather shop at the minute, which is responsible for this process. So therefore, because this is now an integrated process and it happens on 75% of the vehicles, they are now taking this into consideration within their, their future layouts, rather than as it was before, it was a reaction to a supply rejecting the process. So I can interpret that as a short term, it was reaction to demand for customer requirements. Mm -hmm. But longer term, there are, there are obviously now longer term plans to improve upon that, which you've maybe got to allude to in a bit. Great. Yeah. 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 Um, so if we look at the kind of the future state, taking into consideration what we know now um, in, in terms of how it currently sits and what we know in, in, in relation to ergonomic improvements and, and protection of the product and the associate. So here's, here's a graphic that I found uh, that, that shows an ESP, uh, so an electro, uh, electrostatic protected area which protects against ESD, electrostatic discharge. What we've got is a, or what we would require within a future state is a clean and dust free environment. It, dust is a insulator which therefore prevents ESD, which means ESD remains in a product or on a person. And this area, as it is, particularly this one where it's based, is within a leather cutting area. So there's a lot of leather dust that flies around and gets everywhere. And if the dust was to settle in excess on areas like this, even, even if it was the most protected area for um, ESD, it would be void because the level of dust that was there. So you do require a clean industrial environment. On top of that, you would require a specialist ESD flooring. We do have that within the leather shop, and I think it's pretty much uniform across the entire plan. But again, it's no use having the floor if you're then going to put an interception layer in between that, such as the anti-fatigue mine. You need special ESD um, or, or earth um, anti-fatigue mine. Adjustable and supportive seat. So some associates, uh, the associate demographic within the leather shop ranges from those in their teens up to those in their kind of 40s and, and kind of early 50s. And because of that, you need to accommodate all different types of working preferences. This process can take anywhere between 15 and 25 minutes to complete, and you do, as I mentioned before, 30 of them per shift. Um, and whilst the associates do rotate amongst these job sticks, um, so for instance, if you're on station one, you wouldn't be on station one for a few days. And station one is responsible for kind of helping out with these other processes as well. But because of the amount of time that takes, an associate may find it more comfortable and less straining and stressful on their backs, uh, legs, feet, knees, whatever it might be, any ergonomic concerns to be able to sit down. So by providing a chair with the correct lumbar support and adjustable heights, uh, that would go some way towards relieving some of their pressures as well. Similarly, uh, an, an electrically adjustable bench. So uh, with the touch of a button, it can be raised in height. So if an associate prefers to stand, they can. And if they're particularly tall, they can raise the bench up to them rather than having to continue to stoop down and likewise if they're smaller they can lower the bench as well. Um, we've got earth ESD inventory uh, trolleys would be an ideal um, so again you'd have your ESD floor with your ESD trolley no interceptions everything would be compatible and that is where you could store your finished products now you aim to have that as close to point of fit as possible one to protect the product and secondly to reduce the walking and, and, and kind of any uh, climbing motion waste there. Um, Along with that, you would have your adjustable shelf heights. Again, you can put your lighter products on one and your heavier ones on another to ease with, with manual lifting. Um, all tooling should be fixed and earthed. So where, for instance, in the current set here, we've got a metal tool that's just free floating on the desk. Um, it's really small, but here you can see that it's, it's, the tooling is suspended um, from a metal rail across the top, and that would be part of the earthed ESD bench, meaning an associate would reach up use the tool, let go of it, and, and it would always be earthed and ESD-free. 
um, specific and dedicated overhead lighting. So at the minute you've got uh, you have kind of casted shadows coming from coming from everywhere because of the roof lighting. If you were to have a specific um, strip lighting above the area, you would have better lighting, uh, less shadows, and maybe if that was to be adjustable, dimmable, that type of thing, it could work along with the associate as well. Um, fixed earth inventory racking, so rather than having uh, all the stock delivered to a Kanban location outside of the direct working area, directly outside of the reach of the associate, uh, you, would, you, would, you, know, you could possibly look at moving that within a protected area. So one, the, the product is protected, uh, and secondly, the, the associate has less strain and, and kind of movement and waste and that type of thing. Uh, movable ESD stock packaging. So anything that's ESD generally comes in a black container to help you identify it, but it is possible to get mixed condition, especially from the offsite warehouse or the third party logistic provider. And if you were to have that within or delivered into, into this location here, you could freely move that container knowing that it was an ESD container in an ESD area protecting a product through ESP. Um, dedicated clothing, which we, we do fairly well, uh, but there's, there's various shoes which are less ESD than others, and, and therefore you could, you could um, within a future state, either increase the selection or increase the or enforce discipline that says it has to be a certain type of shoe within a certain area. Um, yeah, so that, that, that's the current state, obviously that's not going to be cheap, but neither is the product that it, that it, that it interacts with and the rework time and the, the cost of the business in terms of productivity as well as bottom line and cost and that type of thing is, is extortion. If you're talking 1500 to £1,600 per car for a set of monitors uh, and that's a cost to us, to a, to a customer you're talking probably three, four, five times that amount. So to protect them during the assembly stage is an investment worthwhile from a product perspective, but in terms of the improvements to ergonomics, health and safety, uh, removing the time in motion, removing the, the risk of walking past a or across a, a busy delivery route there, um, it's something that, that I think would be worthwhile. Very good. Uh, the, the, the only bit, so I understand the impact of the proposals that you're making in, in the background to it, which is, which is very clear. Um, the the bit that I think is possibly missing is is to do with like um, productivity improvement method study diagrams data. Can you maybe could you talk a bit more about method study that's taking place in this area, yeah, or, so, or types of those techniques that have been used to factualize what the situation is? Yeah, so we we a popular one within Rolls Royce is called the chalk a chalk circle or or a spider spaghetti diagram. Um, both of these have been done. So a, a chalk circle is um, how far the, the associate can kind of reach within his direct area and a spaghetti is where he moves across across the entire production floor. That has been done and that's what's going to factor into um, the, the revised layouts within the leather shop when they come to help with productivity and, and reduce the, the amount of waste within the area. So when you've done the measurements within the chalk circle and the spaghetti diagram, how are those measurements turned into information that is useful for people to make decisions about? Well, the spaghetti diagram is a visual thing in itself, um, and that generally shows areas of excessive repeat movement. Um, so what you would see is because, because of how these are packaged and how they're delivered, an associate can't do everything within one trip. Yeah. Um, so what you would see in the spaghetti diagram is a trip from here to here, back, here to here, back, and you would see that excessively. That then gives you an indication of of where he travels the most, and then you put the reasons behind that as to a justification as to why he does that, which then goes into the future planning. So you would see from this that he, he travels there to collect four or five different parts on four or five different trips. You would then investigate or start to look at the possibility of having the stock delivered closer to him and any impact that would have on, on other processes around that. And within that sequence, I think you said you, the, 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 the layout is fixed so you couldn't really move things around to do to change the path of the operator easily is that right have i got that right the, the reason that the stock is currently delivered here is for ergonomic considerations to physical logistics and for their method of work and for their time and motion um and, and as i said with this it probably isn't the best example because that is the general uh, kanban store for this entire <coughs> area now there are the layout restrictions that prevent the movement of that against the back wall, for instance, um, and access into this area. Given that this was such an ad hoc addition, the access into this area is prohibited. 
because you do have people working all, all the way around. Uh, within the revised layout, you would go for something like the assembly location would have a built on uh, finished product store, which would be within reach of the few products that this associate actually interacts with. And therefore, you would have a, an entire working area, very similar to something like this perhaps, where he works in one area, collects raw materials and, and um, component parts from maybe his right, assembles them, and then hands them over to his left. Okay. Has there been any changes in so like tack time or anything like that at the moment? Only increasing. Uh, and, and so the associate that works on station one will be responsible for this section as well. So all that would happen is his workload there, his job stick, uh, would be decreased to allow for the additional time required to, to, do the, to do the monitors. Or what they are looking at is having a dedicated man there that does sub-assembly, produces them in a batch, and then he'd go on to another job further on, maybe a quality inspector, which would then allow a reduction in safety. Okay. That's very clear. Thank you very much.